And now, from Glasgow, it's the podcast of the week, sponsored by Dragon Soup. It's the Glasgow Dap Podcast. Where did that come from? <laughs> anyway, well, what was the start of Seal of the Century? He says, and now, from Norwich, it's the quiz of the week. And here's Johnny. I made that bar by the end. That's the Johnny Carson show. <laughs> and now the presenter, Nicholas Parsons. Yay! And people come on, and you had to know the price of stuff. Right. How much is a hand job <laughs> doing in Inverleaf Street? Well, that was always five pound. Depend <laughs> if you went left on, it was four pound. You got a pound discount. <laughs> yes, this is the Glasgow Dad Podcast. Coming up this week. I like my celebs when they are real people. <laughs> That fucking idiot Vernon Kay, he's a grey man in a drab suit. He's a fucking nobody. <laughs> you won't find a dead body in his swimming pool at his house. <laughs> Bruce for sight. And again, Bruce, a total all-round entertainer. Could tell jokes, he could tap dance, he was a piano player, and shagged Miss World as well. What a guy. So my last selection was called Nightmare. Nightmare? Do you not remember that? Uh, bringing you up was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> right. And all that to come, but first of all, as you made aware, we're talking about the five top game shows of all time. Well, well what was the five top game shows of all time? I mean, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> wheel of Fortune's got to be, because spinning that wheel, you remember that wheel? Uh, aye, yeah. And everybody <laughs> is spinning that wheel with you. And you want it to land in the thousand quid. And it would spin and it would go in the thousand, it would keep oh. spinning. Fuck all. <laughs> or bankrupt. Or a pound. Or ten bob. And then you got the letters, didn't you? The letters on the board. The letters, that's right. I th- that was the easy bit. It's just hangman. It's basically hangman. I don't think you could have that in the telly, but. but of course I- you could. It's just a rip-off for Hangman. Ah, well, it was, it's Hangman and, well, the Wheel of Fortune, wasn't it? So, uh, aye, it's just Hangman. Well, Michael McIntyre's The Wheel is basically the Wheel of Fortune, but they're all sitting on it and spinning I've never around. seen that. We're talking about the top five game shows <laughs> of all time. So don't mention that. Michael McIntyre's The Wheel is not even a pimple <laughs> on the arse of the greatest game show yes. of all time. So, so forget it. So the Wheelie Fortune used to be... It was, Is uh, that in one of the top five? I would, it, it wouldn't be in my top five. Wait a minute, have you... Right, have, Not, have you Googled well, this or something? We're, we're deciding with the audience the top five, but personally... We're deciding with the audience? Aye, the listener's going to comment and say what their top five is. All but right. my top five podcast doesn't know so about you. So what's your number <laughs> one game show of all time? The number one game show of all time for me... People might not have heard of it. It's called... People might not have heard of it? <laughs> Aye. Well, does it exist in your head? You bet. What the fuck's you bet? Oh, you've never heard of Matthew Kelly, you bet. No. Oh. Clearly, nobody watched it. I did that. And tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be a game show that nobody's ever fucking heard of. <laughs> what are you talking about? He done fucking stars in your eyes. <laughs> in game for a laugh. And then he became a presenter on fucking classic FM or something. You bet. Aye. So Never you, heard of it. So you would have celebrities, free celebrities. Oh, a load of pampa fannies. <laughs> I want real people winning real money. Well, me, me, fucking celebrities. They're all a bunch of fucking arseholes. So it'd be a guy would come on and say, I can like, balance. Remember that guy that could balance I can balance 10 jammy dodgers on my cock. <laughs> no. That was from the adult edition. But he used to be, he used to, like, somebody would come on and say, I can balance a Ford Focus on my head. And the celebrities would guess if he could. You bet he can, or you bet he can. Well, it wasn't the Scottish person, but that's the sort of thing it was. And then, aye, it was great. I loved it. So what, what feats of amazing brilliance did you see? Did people come on and say, I'll bet you I can put an entire snooker queue up my bum or something? What What did they do? Basically, so they would say, I can juggle eight snooker balls. Eight snooker and balls? And the celebrity would say, I think you can only juggle seven. Oh, what a load of pish. <laughs> did they do anything worthy 
of being on the telly. See, this is a problem now, right? <laughs> you, you could go on the telly and be a nobody, right? The health and safety's fucked everything. You couldn't be juggle snooker boys in the telly now because, oh, it might hit somebody in the heat and then Sunday might get sued. <laughs> Fucking rubbish. So what did you see that was extraordinary on this? I Pro bet you can Probably the guy that balanced a motor in his heat. A guy balanced a motor on his heat. <laughs> no. The guy would have been crushed to death. <laughs> no, he did. A guy never balanced a motor he on his did. heat. It's on, no, he did. It's he. online. No, so, he didn't. Do you remember, remember that big stocky guy who used to balance all this stuff in his heat and no. he used to put the wee thing and he used to spin it and he seemed to be spinning like an escort in his heat. No. <laughs> spinning an escort in his heat? You mean like a prostitute? <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> well, if he could spin a Ford Escort, he could spin her on top of his head. That's for sure. It's probably spinning well, on something well, else. You, 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 you need to Google us, uh, people. There's some <laughs> guy. What was his name? Mr. Lifto. Oh, no, that was the guy. You, did you ever see Mr. Lifto? No. Ah, right. So, now, that was worthy of watching. People are going to Google us. He used to live weights with his Tadger. <laughs> right. He was in the Cirque du Soleil. You know that? No, he wasn't. He fucking was. Mister Lefto. He would. He would. He had a Prince Albert or something you call it when it was through your your booby. A Pearson. A what? A Pearson. Aye, a, a, a ring. A, he would lift stuff with his tadger. He would lift weights with his tadger. No. It's through the fullness of time <laughs> with him lifting all these weights with his tadger. His his tadger became, a, a, in this day and age, quite an exceptional length. I mean, you could bungee jump after Fourth Road <laughs> Bridge with this guy's Bobby. <laughs> Mr. Lifto was his name. And he was in the paper because he says, oh, my wally doesn't work anymore. Well, excuse me, <laughs> but if you're going to use your wally as a forklift, right, what do you think's going to happen, right? What do you think's going to happen? Don't lift... 200 weight a shot blast with your booby. Hey, get a man in. Oh. <laughs> right, so mine's was you, bet. That's my top one that nobody's heard there, apparently. So what was your top game show? Family Fortune. <laughs> 100 mile an hour. Great show. Two families trying to win <laughs> three, four, five thousand pound. First it was Max Bygraves, then it was Les Dennis. And some of the stupidest questions you ever heard in your life. Name something you do when you have extra time in the morning. Uh, uh, have a chug. <laughs> uh, have another cup of coffee. No, you'll burn your buzz if you're wanking yourself. So, family fortune. That was a, that was a great programme. Total entertainment. It's what do you call them that presents it now? Tess Daly's husband, I don't even can remember. Oh, these name. fucking non entities, I don't watch anything <laughs> like that now. With that fucking idiot, Vernon K. Vernon K. That fucking nobody. He's a fucking nobody. He's a grey man in a drab suit with fucking. He's a fucking nobody. <laughs> No, nobody, you won't find a dead body in his swimming pool at his house. <laughs> I like my celebs when they are real people. <laughs> Who's the biggest pointless celebrity of it all? Look They're all fucking pointless. They're all just bloodless, money-grubbing freaks with zero personality. Everybody on the telly now are assholes. They're fear to open their mouth. They're fear to say anything. They just say what they're told. They're just there fucking hoovering up the money and being nobodies. Being nobodies. The guy, to be fair, the, the host for me that's really good the now is Bradley Walsh. He's good. No, I, Bradley's Bradley's all right, actually. Bradley's got a bit of mojo. His son's a fucking spanner, <laughs> but Bradley has got mojo. He's a... Uh, but he's no... Because he does blankety blank, but he's no Les Dawson. He was a Master. Oh, Les Dawson was great. <laughs> he was a master. Les Dawson was great. And I used to like Bullseye. You know, you can't be a bit of bully. And, and what happened was, what's his name? Jim Bowen. Aye. Who got cancelled for being a big racist. Right, fair enough. But he... <laughs> now, the early shows of Bullseye were brilliant because Jim Bowen would rip the arse out the contestants and it was funny. So, there's the big prize board. Bully's big prize board. So, out of the black and into the red, nothing for this game, we're two in a bed, right? <laughs> so, so you would hit the red and you went, oh, you've won a fondue. And I went, oh, you've won a camcorder. 
Oh, you've won a bale of towels. Right? There's always shite prizes. Right? And so if if you had a red, you won a prize. If you were in the black, you won fuck all. And he would say, so you're in the black, he says, oh, you've won a crisp packet. Right? <laughs> Oh, you've won a villa in Vietnam. It was a time in Vietnam, the Vietnam War, no long finish. And and then you take the black again. Oh, you've just lost your villa in Vietnam. Hey. But in and, and, and the producers must have said there must have been these fucking poor faced ball bags writing and going, I, I have issue with uh, Jim Bowen ripping the arse out of his contestants and mm. I think it's not very you know, it's just not cricket. And then they must have told him to stop it. Stop taking the piss out of the contestants because people are writing in. So he stopped it. He stopped it. Oh. And then they'd get a real dart player on. Now, this was annoying me. They would get dart players on, nobody ever heard it. Now, Jockey Wilson, great dart player. Scotland's greatest ever sportsman, Jockey Wilson. Yes, Andy Murray, Chris Hoy, great about the day, Jockey Wilson. Ah, Kenny Douglas, fine. You know, Dennis Law. Jockey Wilson, Scotland's greatest ever sportsman, right? Or Eric Bristow, remember the crafty Cockney? <laughs> was his jockey's arch enemy. It was Scotland versus England in the darts. We jockey was world champion twice, and it was awesome. And we get we jockey on bullseye. And he was decent. I know, we jockey. God rest his sweet soul. But was bullseye? The greatest ever game show. By the way, there's reruns of Bullseye on the telly new, and it's still watchable. It's brilliant. So that would be your top one. No, Family Fortunes. My oh, top Family one. Fortunes. So number two would be Bullseye. Bullseye, definitely. See, my number two is definitely it's, uh, and I've forgot the name of it. That's terrible. No, not bad. <laughs> Strike it lucky. He blew his nose. Nothing came out. <laughs> Nothing came out. <laughs> Strike it lucky. Strike it lucky. Or make, was it lucky, Strike Rich? Strike it lucky. That describes your sex life. <laughs> oh, I might strike it lucky this year. Aye. Or a lucky strike. Was yeah. it Strike it lucky? What was it, Michael Barrymore? Aye, they changed the title. And they, they changed, changed the host. <laughs> well, they changed, well, he, he, he proved to be a, a, a terrible entertainer. I mean, when he's entertaining people at his home. Well, we can't can't go, can't go into that. But well, okay, Oliver, he's, he's not a very good host. He's very popular on social media. Well, good days. for him. So that was probably the funniest game show, like because his come Strike it lucky. His comebacks were incredible. Oh, nah, I didn't enjoy Strike It Lucky. Um, but it, it was good. I could see why people watched right. it. Know what I liked. That that one with the cards. Play your cards right. Brilliant. Play your cards right. Higher or lower. Because you play that in the house for money. <laughs> See when everybody's steaming. Come on, we'll get a game at. Well, I don't know what you call it. Right. Guess is the next card higher or lower. Right. I'll bet you two bob, and then you cover the two bob. Right. <laughs> or ten bob and a pound. Right. I'll cover the pound higher or lower. And then just ah, fucking. He takes his two pound. Right. Next one. I put a pound and I will cover it right. Nay bother. In fact. My mother, it was it was called banker. That mm -hmm. she called her, and she and fucking take everybody's money off them, <laughs> take everybody's money off them, hey. And you go, I I'll, I'll have a go, and then fucking before you know it, you're robbed, <laughs> robbed blind. Off my mother, <laughs> shocking. God rest her sweet soul. Don't know where the money's stashed. She must have spent it in fags and power cards. So we're going to put this game in hold, but we're going to be back with some of our clips from our live show featuring. Frank McAvenny. You see, Frank's a real celebrity. Frank's no a grey man. Frank's got a story. You know what I mean? No Vernon K. Let me tell you about my air fryer. Fucking diddy. Okay, stay tuned and we'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored and supported by Dragon Soup. Now, you can get this in around 13 flavours. And right. you can get it in most Glasgow convenience stores and pubs and nightclubs in the town as well. Well, how convenient. It's a caffeinated alcoholic beverage and I've got a peach and raspberry flavour here. <laughs> now, thanks to Dragon Soup because without their support, we couldn't put this content out, so thank you. And remember, people, remember, please, please drink responsibly. My boy <laughs> wants to be a professional footballer. Need right? no chance. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but what? I mean, I mean, he's fat enough. I mean, I'd rather be a professional shagger, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> mine, go, mine goes with the other. <laughs> I, know. I know. You just dry people up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> sure. Uh. <laughs> no, but no, but I mean, he's good. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, and you're fit. You've he pays a guy, a, like a personal trainer. All right, right, and he pays a guy to torture him. Uh, I mean, I'm pay good money for that. Aye, I know. Myself, but <laughs> I've done, guy... done that in Hong Kong. It was great. <laughs> 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 but I never played football till I was nineteen. I never played at all. But I was so thin. I was I had, I had ginger hair. Probably ginger, right? I had ginger hair. No, I was so thin. Honestly. Remember, I was like a fucking swan vest a match. No, Honestly. I know. I've, I've seen pictures you seen of you that? back in the day. So as soon as I could afford it, <laughs> I got a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> hairdresser sorted that right out. And changed my life and everything, sex life and everything. <laughs> so, back to our gaming then. Our top five game shows. Right, so I, I had Wheel of Fortune, Family Fortunes, uh, and Player Cards, right? Mm -hmm. so I had, and Bullseye. And Bullseye, right. So I had You Bet. Then strike I it lucky. Strike it lucky. So I've still got a few. Uh, you've still got a few. But, but yeah, hurry up. What was the one with the the golden arrow? That uh, was That you... was in fucking 1950. No, it I wasn't, wasn't even born then. Bob Monkhouse presented it. The golden shot or something? The golden shot. I never watched that. That was brilliant, man. I never watched that. You wouldn't... See, we weren't allowed to watch We weren't allowed to watch Bob Monkhouse in our house because my da, your granda, fucking hated him. Hated him. I don't know why, I, I don't know why, maybe, I don't know, he stole his bird when he was younger or something, I don't know, I, I don't believe that my father ever met Bob Monkhouse, but he fucking hated the permatanned entertainer that was Bob Monkhouse. Mm. So I like that, that was probably in my top five, and then the other one was definitely Bruce for Forsyth Generation. Game. Oh, phenomenal, Bruce Forsyth, and again, Bruce... A total all-round entertainer. Could tell jokes, he could tap dance, he was a piano player, and shagged Miss World as well. What a guy. <laughs> what a guy. It's like George Best if he could play the piano and tap dance. But I bet, you, I bet you Bruce Forsyth was a great football player and all, but I never played five or six. Right? And nothing's ever come out about him, so he's been Nothing's clean. ever come out about him. Clean as a whistle, old Bruce Bruce Forsyth, <laughs> absolutely. Get the old fist out. Hey. Absolutely. The Generation Game, see, that was one of the shows where you would literally be barely laughing because they were trying to do they things. Were, they were taking a piss you people, they were getting uh, them in day stuff and it was great and it was real people. Uh, they brought an expert in, didn't they, to do like pottery? That's like, right. To make up I know. And then and it was flying on. Pretty much it. end of the pier. It was, it was set up so that if you were doing pottery or baking, you ended up looking like a big wally or something. <laughs> so that was all oh, good, clean fun. And no disrespect to them personally, but it was a bad fit. Sue and Mel tried to present it and it was brutal. Sue and Mel, Mel and Sue. Aye, Mel and Sue. Oh, Aye. Sue Perkins and Mel Guide. Aye. Just didn't they work. No, it didn't they work because these, you know. <sighs> These people, are, they're all media trained and they're dull, dull people. <laughs> they're dull. You're fucking dull. <laughs> Go and work in Fraser's or something. <laughs> and as someone who's due to work with Melanson, save in the future, we apologise. They're for fucking that. dull people. <laughs> the perfect cure for insomnia. Come and visit me. I can't sleep. You'll be out like a fucking light. Tweet, tweet. So... You've got four, I've got four, so final two then each. And then I'm sure the viewers and listeners, please put in the comments what you think. Don't just put the best game shows, put your top five in the comments and we'll we'll come back to you. One of my personal favourites was The Krypton Factor. Do you ever remember The Krypton Factor? Was that with the crystals? No, that was the crystal maze. Oh, I... Right. <laughs> the Krypton Factor was in the 80s and 90s and what it was, it was... People who are super fit and super intelligent, so it wouldn't be on the telly now because it's only me that would get on it, right? And then nobody else would be qualified to get on it, right? Because they're a fucking morons, right? The Krypton Factor, they used to do an army assault course, it was used by the parachute regiment, the Marines or something, and then it would be intelligence tests and dexterity tests 
and everything like that. Uh, presented by Gordon Burns was his name. And it was, it, you had to be super intelligent and super fit. Fucking great show. Never missed it. And Mastermind, I love Mastermind. Now, they've made Celebrity Mastermind, which is, I don't know where they get the questions off a Fisher Price toy or something, but Celebrity Mastermind, he could win it. <laughs> and he knows fuck all. Family friend of mine won Mastermind. He was the youngest person ever to win it. Really? Yes. He was, As a real mastermind? Yeah, 24, I think. Well, he, he must be good. He was very good. He must know his stuff. So I think that was two years ago he won it. Really? Yeah, he was the youngest ever person. It's Hannah, my wife's What's cousin. What's he doing, Michelle, now? Cousin. He's, like, studying to be a professor or something. Like studying that. to be a professor or at 26? Or he's going to be a professor, right? You're not going to get a lot of sex being a professor. Best of luck with that. He's very intelligent. With your sports jacket on and your pipe. <laughs> I'm a professor. <laughs> You're not going to get tea bagged. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, my so my last selection is actually a kids sort of game show. A kids game show. It was called Nightmare. Nightmare. Do you not remember that? Yeah, what, bringing you up was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> right. So what happened was it was like the early days of VR, right? Where you would never have heard of VR before. This show came out. And what the kids did is they put on a, a like a helmet, a, it was called Nightmare, and they put a helmet on and they had to walk through like castles and all that. And their, really? their pals would say like, step right, two steps to the right, two, two steps to the left. And then they would meet these like goblins and stuff <laughs> who would give them clues. And then they would meet to, goblins. Aye, they'd they have they, like, it might be filmed in like... A lot of helmets meet a lot of goblins. <laughs> but so you never, you never saw that. I never saw it. It was brilliant. I, you know what? I, I don't feel bereft knowing that I missed it. They took it to the fringe. They took it to the fringe. Aye. Aye, and it's disappeared without trace. <laughs> brilliant. It must have done very well for itself. <laughs> Nightmare it was called. Oh, brilliant. It was, if you enjoyed yeah. Nightmare, again, tell us in the comments. If, if you if you enjoyed Nightmare, go and mm. watch another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's me get my top five then. And that's me getting my top five. I should get a top five. So what if we missed that maybe never made the list? I what, don't know. What do we think? It was that one with Jimmy Tarbuck. He, he did. It was a, it was it was that like betting thing. I don't remember what it was called. Jimmy Tarbuck had a game show in the seventies, which I watched, but it was always on at lunchtime. Right. So I don't know how I watched it. Oh, it must have been in the summer holidays. One that was quite innovative was a uh, big break with Jim Davidson and John oh, Burger and Quiz. John Virgo, Jim Davison. The trick shot was brilliant. When John Virgo showed a trick shot and then they had to they had to do the trick shot themselves to win a prize. Well, I mean, John Virgo's good at the trick shots and he does impressions of Alex Higgins and all that. But again, that's back in the day. Thank God for Ronnie O'Sullivan because he's got personality and he's fucking the greatest snooker player he's ever lived, right? I mean, he's phenomenal. Stephen Henry was great. Steve Davis was great. But Ronnie's just on another planet. And he's a, he's a wido. He's brilliant. He says, yeah, it's on a Q action, mate, isn't it? I mean, the stand and, and snooker, I could lose an arm. I'd still be in the top 50. He's taking a piss. He's basically saying everybody else is shit. <laughs> and uh, that's funny. I, I, I admire that. He's taking a piss. He's, mm -hmm. he's been a bit fresh. But back in the 80s, Alec Higgins, I'd... I, Unbelievably flawed person, Alec Higgins, but you couldn't fucking take your eyes off him. Alec Hurricane Higgins and Jimmy White was another madman. Mm. Right. These what I mean, Snooker. You'd watch Snooker in the eighties. Eddie Charlton, Ray Reardon, John Taylor, fucking bore you to death. You know. Cliff Thorburn, they called him the, the methodical grinder. Holy God, man. It was unwatchable. <laughs> and then Higgins, Alec Higgins would go, oh, fuck this. He pissed out his nut, steaming, drinking pints of vodka, just like we Jockey Wilson, right? And fucking get 180, a nine dart finish, pissed out his nut, right? That's Scotland's greatest sportsman, right? And if you see Alec Higgins, amazing. And he would clear the table. He's no, he's not got position on anything. And he'd clear the table. There'd be an impossible green angled into the corner, and just 
the b- the best player drunk you ever saw playing snooker. But pissed out his nut. But John Virgo probably wasn't the most known snooker player. The was he? only ever ranking tournament that John Virgo won was the UK Open in nineteen eighty two. Was the only r- ranking tournament. So a good agent then, unless he came up with the idea. Maybe he came up with the format. The Maybe, show. but but John Virgo, I mean John Virgo, he was a top player. But I mean, he he lived in the era when Davis came in, and he was unbeatable. And mm. then when Davis was there, and then Henry came along, and fucking he was unbeatable. So John Virgo was a wee bit unlucky, I suppose, just the wrong time. But he was a very, he's a very popular. He's very popular on mm. to the British view in public. He became a commentator and a TV mm. presenter, and he, he he's very entertaining. He's got, he's got personality. Mm. Do you know the top ranking game show for earnings? The top ranking game show for and earnings. Oh, Jeopardy! What the fuck's that? <laughs> Jeopardy's like the biggest American game show. Well, long... I don't. What the fuck? We I you... can't even watch that. Aye, they tried it. I can't even watch that in Kunshu Telly. They tried it out here and it never worked. Why did it not work? What did it, so what's it, what's it about? I don't even know. Well, what's the point of bringing it up? Well, you're talking about fucking snooker players for five hours. <laughs> you <Yeah, man, laughs> <bastard. laughs> Another kid's one, so we had Nightmare, was Fun House with Pat Sharp with the two twins. I know, I think one of the twins passed away. They went through a bit of a tough time. Mm. I know, there wasn't a fun house for them. But Pat Sharp was probably well known with his long hair and his... The car wash, went through the car wash at the end. But it was filmed here, in Cowcaddens. Was it? Aye, did you know that? Mm, you. Yeah. Nebdy, if you never knew that, because I never knew until the producer told me about two minutes ago. Well, there, was a, there was another game show, which I did the studio warm-up on. Right, the weakest line. Called Win, Lose or Draw. The, it, it was Shane Ritchie was the presenter. Then it was Bob Mills, and then it was Lisa Tarbuck. And I did studio warm up, and I'm on an half in between all the, all the old buddies, you know, <laughs> keeping them entertained, right? What would you say to them? What, what sort of stuff? Hello, where are you from? And if you not allowed to swear or in. Oh, you'd have been, you been, must have not been no, on long. Great then. At it. No, I was great at it. It's fine. I can, I can work without swearing. So if he said, Oh, I'm, I'm retired, you yeah, would, I would say, say what? whatever came up, and I would just keep them entertained, do <laughs> a wee laugh, and all that sort of thing. <laughs> But Win, Lose or Draw was based on this idea. Is it Pictionary or something? You got to, you got to draw a picture and they've got to guess what it is. So, what, how did it work? So, Win, Lose or Draw was, you would get a film title and you need to draw. So, it's a bit like Give Us a Clue, which was Lionel Blair back aye, in the aye. day, where you go, it's a film or a book and sounds like, I don't fucking know, right? So instead of acting it out like charades, you would draw on the thing. And the the, the best, Lisa Tarbuck was amazing at it. And she became the presenter. She mm. was amazing at it. She always did well. Mm. And she was a lovely person as well. Talking about the actual presenters, or some of the presenters have been found, not found out, but they've sort of dropped from grace, is that what you say? They've fallen from grace. They've fallen from grace. They've fallen from grace. Yes, they probably were over here saying arse in a wine bar or something, because that's what gets you fucking done these days. Well, one of them, who obviously, Jim Davidson will never come back because he's... His views and what he says online and all this nonsense. Jim Davidson's getting more money you could ever dream about. And I bet I bet you he's touring right now and he's filling theatres. I don't know if he's filling them, but... And then you've got Michael Barrymore, obviously. He sells toilet rolls on TikTok now. Does he? Well, he... <laughs> <laughs> he sells toilet rolls on TikTok. He ba- he's, he's got a TikTok shop. Is he? And he like basically... It's like, he's basically like a newer version of QVC. Right, good for him. So he's, he, he, he presents things and, and like does wee stints with the toilet roll that says, oh, what are you doing? White Marcy's a day. Sort of things. That's what he does. Sad. It's very sad, but, you know, it's, we're prostituting ourselves. <laughs> so it's the way the game's played. I mean, I'll end up going and managing a team in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That's the way it's going. 
So that's game over from us. But before then, here's the best clip from last week. People, uh, people meet me, and you know they 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 come up to me and they're like, "Oh, hello, Victor." I'm like, "Hi, how are you?" And they're like, ah, "Fuck off." <laughs> 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 you, were, you, were you born here or born in Canada? I was born in Glasgow and I moved away when I was like three. With my parents, obviously. Right. I didn't just fuck it. <laughs> and sure, he went to Canada. Went to Canada, grew up there. Your dad got the jail, had to come <laughs> yeah, back exactly. home. What happened? <laughs> exactly. I mean, Came I mean, back when I was 16. Well, that's pish. Yeah. I know. You went to Canada and it didn't work out for your mind. What happened? Fuck. Well, I mean, fuck shake. It's not, it's, it's not like coming back to wish you. She's pish, by the way. No, no, no. You get to Canada. What happened? <laughs> it's a boring story for a comedy gig because well, it's all fucking about hurry up. the fucking... Hurry up. <laughs> And as always, thanks to Dragon Soup for sponsoring this episode and the podcast. If you want to come and see us, visit glesgodad.com, click the bio link in any of our socials where you can see tickets for our next live show. Give us five stars in your podcast provider, it really helps. And also click the bell button in YouTube so it notifies you when we upload a new video. And as always, please spread the word and tell your friends if you enjoyed us, but if you didn't... Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do